since we're since it, everything's <laughs> working. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey everybody, this is Frankie Slauson here, and welcome to another great episode of the Frankie Slauson Show. And today I am uh, have a chance to do something I haven't done. Uh, this is the first time ever, as far as doing interviews overseas. Anyway, I'm talking to a guy named Julian. Let me see. What What's your last name? Molinero. Molinero. Okay. Yeah. Julian Molinero, and he's a uh, he's uh, known from the band Medusa, and I, it's it's a band that. Uh, you have you know, most people probably haven't heard of because I don't know. Are you guys like an unsigned band or, or just kind of like an underground band or? Yeah, it was like kind of an independent okay. uh, underground band. Okay. Yeah, uh, based in London. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm kind of curious first uh, <laughs> to to kind of know how the heck you uh, got how you how you found me in the first place. Uh, well, I'd sort of I heard the uh, <laughs> just had the Andrews and so. Uh, so, uh, so oh, okay. You heard the Giuseppe Andrews inter- interview because uh, so, somebody uh, from your th- from your c- thing uh, got a hold of me or whatever and uh, said if, <coughs> asked if I'd be interested in doing an interview with you. So I'd be like, yeah, sure, no problem. I just see if I can get this Skype thing to work and uh, see if I can do international calls. It like it worked pretty good. So here we are. <laughs> so. Uh, so let's talk about your band and how it all got started. How did it sure. get started? How, how did it get started? Um, well, just uh, I came out of school like uh, quite a few years ago. I just kind of fell into it and um, just seemed like the, the thing I should be doing and uh, just put it up together a band at school. And yeah, after that, We've just kind of gone through a lot of different other people in the band. It's just me and loads of different drummers, loads of different bass players who have been in it over years. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. I mean, it's like, uh, it kind of seems like uh, you guys have uh, established yourself, because I've heard the heard the stuff on YouTube that uh, you put together anyway, the two albums anyway. Yeah. Yeah, they're good music anyway. What, what would you like uh, call yourself? More like a punk rock band or rock and roll band? Or yeah, I'd say I think we're a punk band. Um, some of it kind of leaning more towards the rock and roll thing. I think the first album was more like eighties rock. I was interested in, in that at the time, but it was just so raw. It kind of sounded like punk anyway. And then after that, I kind of got back into punk. But yeah, punk is. Like kind of. Okay. That's, that's, that's my point of interest in it all. Yeah. Oh, that, that uh, that's what it's, uh, seems like it kind of sounds like anyway. As far as uh, from what I, from what I heard anyway. Yeah, well, I think so. Some people kind of uh, some people kind of think it was in between like heavy metal and punk, and we've had a hard time like not being accepted in the like in like punk festivals and stuff like that because people think we're a heavy metal band, and then we don't. We don't can get accepted in like the heavy metal stuff because it's not a punk band. Oh sure. And so so it, it's not, and it's not even kind of worked out in a good way. It's kind of just <laughs> falling in between those two things and not not being accepted into them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's just that's doing our own thing. I think what punk is about is um, being you, doing what you want to do and being, you want to be anyway. So it's, it's stupid to try and copy it like a tradition. I'm not, I'm not yeah. interested in that. No, I understand completely. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of like uh, you know, you 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 want to set out your dreams to make it really, really big, but you know, it's, you kind of got to start off small, you know, first. And uh, it's good to use the internet as a platform for that. Yeah, well, it's quite it's quite a, a weird time to be doing stuff like that with the internet, as, uh, the you know the the way it is now. Oh sure, yeah. Well, I'm not sure how how long the Skype is going to let me call or talk to you. I I it seems like uh, my credits is going pretty fast because I'm talking to you overseas. But uh, I'll try to if it, if it, if the phone uh, stops after uh, after so many minutes, I'll I'll try to figure it out and call you back. But for right now, anyway, sure. uh, I'll just keep asking a question here. Uh, so like uh, so when you got started, uh, like who were some of your inspirations uh, to get involved in music? Mm, I was kind of. I was interested in a lot of um, like 90s alternative rock bands at first, 
and they were getting involved in uh, a lot of the British punk bands that were playing in my house, uh, like, even, like local bands and the Buzz Clocks and the Damned all kind of played nearby and most of the people who, who were watching those bands were like old guys that were about when punk was first about um but yeah i just i saw that as the roots of it all and but that yeah that's what interested me okay yeah i mean it, it, it's kind of neat uh you know to have a, a mixture of a of a band to inspire and, and you know there's been a lot of great british bands out there <laughs> looks like my fail okay Hold on, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to call him back here because it looks like uh, I ran out of Skype credits. So we're gonna try to call him back and see if I can try this again. Plan for a month. Pay monthly. Buy a subscription. Pay as you go. Let's see. this. Hold on folks here, we're gonna try to call him back here. I'm just gonna hit up. <laughs> oh, back to call you. Hey Julian, just me again. <laughs> I ran out yeah. I ran out of Skype credit so I put ten dollars more in there so so when it runs out we'll just have to end the interview. <laughs> sure. Yeah my my phone's the same. I'm always like that. Oh sure. Yeah, it kind of sucks, you know, when it comes to paying more for a phone call than I normally do. I, on Skype, I, I pay normally $3 a month, and I can call anywhere in the United States and, and only pay $3 a month. So it's different when it comes to overseas, anyway. <laughs> There's probably some kind of piracy trick to it. Yeah, who but knows? Who knows? But, uh, I don't know anything about that stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I was uh, very happy to be able to, t to, to chat with you and... Uh, uh, whatever, I forgot what question I was asking you before, but uh, I think we were talking about some of your influences, I think. Yeah, well, I think we finished that, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm quite spaced out today. I'm just messed in a hangover, but it's like 11 o'clock at night, so I'm kind of becoming okay again. Oh, sure. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we finished that question. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just ask you another one then. Uh, like, uh, where do you see yourself, like, like in the next five years with your band? I mean, do you see yourself really going somewhere big, or or, or is it just more low key for you? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of m more interested in just doing it, uh, uh, kind of for the for the music at the moment, and we're just we're working on the third album at the moment. Um. And I'm kind of my focus is we're not even playing gigs at the moment, and it's kind of, I'm purely working on songwriting for at least the end of the year to make sure that as preparations to make the album as good as possible, and just make it like 12 songs that are really, really strong. Oh, sure. And yeah. that, that, that's the pure focus. I, I, don't, I can't see beyond that, I don't care. Oh. About that, I'll, I'll, I'll worry about that after the album's finished, and you know, because I just see it as like one thing at a time, and they just focus on that. And we just sorted out uh, getting our artwork for the album cover this week, which is like a cool little cartoon character of like a punk girl. Um, and so you know, the thing is very slowly, like the pieces are coming together, like that for, for this record. Oh, sure. Yeah, and and you know you, you just never know where a person can go, you know, with their music and and uh, how big of a fan base do you have right now? Uh, not great at the, at the moment. We kind of we moved. I've, well, I've moved about a lot in the UK, so um, like been in different cities. But I live in London at the moment, and I've just I just had a new band every time I've moved to a new city. And so it like, kind of disrupts the, the, the fan base thing, but you know, the, that's just uh, that's not a thing I'm kind of concentrating on at the moment anyway, so okay. I'll, I'll, I'll worry about that later, yeah. I think, in the yeah. next stage of playing gigs. Oh, uh, sure. Gen purely focusing on gigs and touring and stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's kind of cool. Maybe you could see yourself doing like an, an Oz fest or something like that. Maybe or or some type of 
uh, big festival in the UK or anything like that? Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, <I'll open> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, have you ever been to the United States at all and performed? Never. I've never been uh, um, uh, just on holiday or anything either. I have no idea what it's like, but it seems quite scary with all the gun stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's something that puts me off. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, we we got a lot of different uh, venues here in in America and stuff. You know, where I mean, even myself, I live two hours away from a uh, 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 two venues that uh, they have concerts here at once in a while. Like the, the Ralph Eggleston Arena and the Alara Center, which they always have some big name bands always come and, and rock the places. You know, whenever they can. So, you know, I guess you just never know. Uh, like, uh, what are some of the biggest venues that you've ever played on, or have you never, or like that you can remember? Well, we played, we played with some like punk festivals. We played at um, Manchester Academy and uh, a, a big club in Manchester called M2. Um, to, like local town halls and stuff like that. So yeah, we, we played like quite. We've never played anything <laughs> like amazing like stadiums or anything. Okay. But, you know, it's, a punk, it's a punk kind of band, so it doesn't it doesn't need to be. It's, I'm quite happy to. Do the small venues, obviously. Oh, sure. Uh, more people, the better, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, what was I going to say? Like, uh, so you consider yourself kind of like a bar band, kind of, in a way, in some way? Mm, well, yeah. Well, at the moment, in London, yeah. But, like, in the, when we, well, I, we lived in the north before. Like, I'm from the north of England. Yeah. And when we were there, we were able to play, like, a lot bigger places and had a lot more... Uh, like for fan base, it's like all like friends of the whole band would be there, and like word can spread so much easier through friends of friends. And there's not that many bands there, but in London, like I've lived in London for like two years, and all the venues, most of the venues, uh, apart from for, ma for massive bands, are just like the bars. Like I live in Camden, and it's all bars, and like, like some of them are. Like, Supposedly have reputations of being like trendy bars, such and such a band to play that, but it is pretty much all like a, a bar live band like, kind of culture. Yeah, but there's like thousands and thousands of bands at uh, gigs on every single night. So it's a, it's a different, it's a different kind of thing. I mean, I don't. Know. Yeah, I was I've never been to America, but I, don't, I can't really compare it so for that reason. Sure. Well, that's okay. You got your local flavor, and are you pretty well known, like in your in your area, anyway? Uh, well, we haven't been playing gigs for a while. Just uh, like I said, I'm concentrating on the new album. But okay. um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe not not as much as I'd like us to be. I guess. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, when we get uh, when we're ready to start gigging again, I'm just going to go all out on that. And, dig as much as we possibly can so I think I think then, then will be the time for to treat it more like a military operation of playing as many gigs and uh, uh, trying to bring people along uh, at that point sure yeah. uh, uh, I was watching on YouTube uh, on your uh, YouTube channel called Med Medusa Flicks you got that uh, 23 minute documentary you want to talk about that a little bit mm, uh, yeah, that was, that was just the thing of, we had a bunch of footage of uh, leftover from gigs we played from when the band was based up in the north of England and uh, we had the extra footage from the music videos we made and it was just the thing that kind of naturally kind of came together and it's just a, it's called In Bed With Inducer and it's just kind of a, a what's it called, a sort of not a parody exactly kind of taking this it was Madonna which is what in America I think it's called a uh, true for the Madonna film but uh, in, in the UK it's called uh, In Bed With Madonna so it's it's the same kind of style as that just being black and white and copying the credits and stuff oh sure sure yeah no it looked pretty good and I, I like the black and white feel to it that was kind of nice <laughs> yeah 
yeah, it was, it was, it was good. I said to us when we recorded our uh, first album and uh, stuff that we thought was lost, uh, like we were trying to get hold of uh, all this lost footage that different bass players had and different friends had on, on video camera, and so it was all a bunch of lost footage all put together uh, some, with some new stuff and just piecing together the story of kind of what's happened so far in the band. Oh, sure. Like yeah. An early years thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it said, what, like 2007, I believe? Somewhere yeah, around. most most of the footage is all from that, 2007, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who who was the people that uh, were behind the scenes, like, uh, that made the, like, that filmed the documentary? No, I just, just, uh, the, the guy called Adam Simcox who, um, did our, our music videos, we got three music videos, uh, and, uh, kind of him and the friends that filmed the, the, the video footage. But I, I'm, I don't know, I kind of, I, I kind of like the music videos more that we've done, but I'd, I'd like to, uh, uh, something that would be in the pipeline is uh, when we do the gigs for to promote the next album is um, towards the end of the, the set of gigs to promote the album I'd, I'd really like us to do a, a feature length like home video on like filmed on several cameras um, and put it together as a, a live document uh, just you know, like a definitive live concert thing of, of the band Oh, uh, sure. And uh, I think that'll be good because we'll have three albums out, but by that point, we can, we can have songs from each album in that kind of way. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, so you're working on your, your third album. Uh, mm -hmm. can, can you talk about it at all? What, what, well, you're um, what I've kind of got, I've got right next to me here in my bedroom, like a, <laughs> a cassette recorder. Sure. Um, and like, loads of blank cassettes. And uh, I just uh, making demos after demos. I've got like 330 minutes so far of uh, demos of just my guitar, um, and I'm just building it up to just get thousands of hours of it. Uh -huh. so, so we want 12 songs, and I've got um, four so far. Okay. I think are really good. So I've got a third of it already. Are you pretty and good? I've, I've, are you pretty good at doing? Uh, are you pretty good at doing like cover music and all, like cover bands and all, or? Or cover oh, songs? No, no, we, no, we don't do that really. Sometimes in, in gigs we do covers. Like we did, um, we used to do Cindy Lauper, uh, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, but change it to Girls Just Wanna Wash Up. <laughs> we, we, did, we did some that. Uh, that didn't go down too well with like drummer's girlfriends. We, we had a drummer whose girlfriend like, had a fit of doing that one. But we did, we, and we did like 90 dance songs and. It was Billy Idol song. Oh, yeah. You know, just some uh, eclectic kind of things. Uh, but we don't, we don't do that on the album, so the yeah. albums are like, it was just uh, my songs. Oh, sure. I'm sure, because uh, I'm sure if you did any cover songs, you'd have to go through all the copyright stuff and get permission and all that stuff and all the bullshit. Yeah, bullsh yeah all the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, like, when you guys used to perform, or, or like when you were doing your music and stuff, like when you go on the road, like uh, what were mm -hmm. some of the what were some of the uh, territories that you would uh, like stop at, like like other than just London? I mean, where you like go like to Sweden or Paris? Or? Oh no, we can't afford that. Oh okay. <laughs> no, we, we, I think we're, yeah, we've only ever played in the UK, but we've kind of played all over the UK. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We were just cost too much money to do. Go gallivanting around to. Yeah. I think mean, the, the only places we could kind of reach would be like France or the, the, the European countries, whatever, that it has to support you. Know, we can't afford to go to America to get like a one off yeah. kind of show. But I, I don't think that would do us any favors. I don't, I don't think there would be much point in you know, doing one gig. Yeah. You can't, you can't build a, a fan base with one gig in that. Oh, yeah. You know, crazy <laughs> and, and you and you kind of wonder you know like I've always kind of wondered you know you you see all these bands that have been around especially the ones that have been around for a long long time you kind of wonder I kind of wonder anyway like what's their secret to success like, like the Rolling Stones like when they first started you know when nobody heard of them or whatever 
how the heck did they get so famous? Or like the Beatles, I mean, how the heck, you know? <laughs> well, uh, that's something I think about a lot. I think it's, um, I, think, I kind of think a lot of it has been at the right place at the right time, and the, the music being representative of what the whole culture at the moment is feeling, and like, that's tended to be, to, to be it, I think, I think and luck as well. And, yeah. Uh, but I think now it's quite a hard time to do that because in the past it was kind of like a band like the Beatles would represent almost everyone, yeah. uh, and you know it, it was you know one band that would speak for everyone. But now there's there's so many options of different bands to listen to. No band gets that big anymore. Um, now it's kind of just, just subgenres and stuff. So it's, it's just weird and harder. There's a lot of things going on bands as well. Like every everyone, it's not everyone famous for fifteen minutes. It's, uh, everyone's famous for fifteen people, more so now. Sure. So you don't think the Beatles would would have made it if they would have started today? No, no. Imagine like it, it'd be ridiculous. Um, I, I think, but then it, it would have had to have been done already because they, they were quite similar to other bands at the time and yeah. the 50s uh, groups so I think it would just seem like a retro thing well you never know, you never know. yeah yeah and it's also like uh, you know the difference between a band that's been around forever and then a band that's only like known as a one hit wonder band and, and still goes on tour and everything I, you know it's kind of wonder I guess you know how long they want to be a part of part of the music industry I'm sure maybe the Beatles I'm sure maybe the Beatles never thought they'd be a part of the music industry for as long as they were even Paul McCartney is still doing new music uh, as we speak I mean and, and the guy's like a billionaire you know he he didn't he wouldn't have to work again if he didn't want to but he but he still does it so <laughs> it's, it's quite crazy. I actually live at the moment like right next to Abbey Road oh I'm not but, but I'm not a fan of the Beatles so. oh but, sure but, okay. yeah, but, but they decided to stop doing the Beatles but, before 30 they didn't know that today I kind of heard yeah so that's, it's, it's quite weird that, that, you know if, if you believe in a, in a band that much why why you stop doing it oh yeah so it's, uh, each, it's quite weird but well <laughs> I don't know they, they were still musicians I guess but uh, so, it, the music we made after that wasn't that dissimilar yeah so uh Maybe it, it just didn't so my last question for you there, Julian, and first of all, I, I want to take the time to, to thank you just again for letting me do this interview. This is pretty cool just to do something overseas and to maybe help you guys out. I don't have a big following either, so you know I don't know how much it'll help you out, but but it's just fun to be able to to talk to somebody that's overseas to, to yeah, that's doing something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing to do, I think. Yeah, no problem. Uh, no. The last question I have for you is, uh, what advice would you give to somebody who uh, wants to do music for a living, like what you're doing? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a good idea. I don't know if... I, <laughs> I, well, some people think... Um, I think it was, it was Jeff Buckley said that like, being, choosing to be a musician... I don't like Jeff Buckley either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't like him at all, but I happen to hear him say it. But um, it's like a ridiculous decision to choose to be a musician. Um, but I, I kind of think it's kind of a ridiculous thing to not choose to be a musician in a way, because um, I mean, if that's what you want to do, like, why would you want to like just not ignore that and just concentrate on something else that you know your heart's not in, like? no reason to not do it and the art is the only thing that lives on really isn't it like yeah. anything anything else can completely fade or be, be worthless um, but if, if you if you created any kind of art or any kind of documents of your time on earth it, that's going to live on so I think it's worth doing but maybe not uh, going too obsessively overboard with it um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, hey, you know, uh, I, I I like to hear a little advice, even you know, even if it's not, you know, you talk about Jeff Buckley and stuff like that. I I don't really listen to him either, so I mean, uh, but it's nice. It, but it's okay to use uh, you know advice, you know, and, and and give advice because you know you just never know. I mean, a little advice can go a long way. I'd say. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's good to just hear every, hear. That's what I kind of try and do is listen to what everybody's got to say about everything, uh, and then later on kind of make my mind up of who's an idiot and who's worth listening to, and just you know you get the best of all the advice that there is out there, or the, the best of both worlds, and then just choose. Oh sure. All right, man. Well, I tell you what. I hope uh, hope you and your band have lots of success, and maybe one day uh, you'll make it to the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> hopefully. Sure. Hope, hopefully, yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be, we can do a catch-up interview in five years or something. Yeah, hey, we uh, can. <laughs> and you won't have to call overseas either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I appreciate to have you on, and. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to, to talk again in the future because uh, yeah it'd be great to see, uh, to see what you guys have been up to after a while cool yeah sounds good thank you very much alright man take care and that was Julian let me get his last name here again Julian Molerno or Moler, no, Molinario Moler, yeah, I'm just botching his name Molerno or Molinario anyway and he's from the band Medusa, that uh, you know, band that I'm sure most of you guys have never heard of. It's one of those independent bands that uh, you know are you know it's, it's probably had its share of some tough times, you know, obviously because of the fact that uh, it's not really uh, you know a big band right now. Most people haven't heard their music, but uh, um, if you go to their, I'll, I'll put some down uh, some of their links to their their YouTube channel and. Uh, probably their Facebook fan page, and you can like them, and, uh, uh, who knows, I mean, uh, their YouTube channel has their, both of their two albums that they've done, uh, that you can listen to their entire album, the first album's like 20 minutes, or 21 minutes, and second's like almost 40 minutes long, so, uh, you can listen to it for free, and, uh, just if you, uh, go on their Facebook page and, and hit a like, and, uh, uh, who knows, I mean, they could be the next big band, sometimes you just never know where... Life will take you. One day you're independent and doing something small, and the next day you're uh, you're making it big, or you're like me and you <laughs> end up in the your local hometown paper. Uh, not by accident either, but just because uh, they were interested in my story, and I finally got to tell the story. So <laughs> you just never know. But anyway, Frankie Slauson, and uh, thank you for tuning in to my 40th interview this season and 20th overall as far as. Uh, for 2013, I'm one away from breaking my record from 2012 of 20 interviews, uh, so I need one more interview to break that record, and we actually got some big guests coming, and uh, I'm not going to give it away yet. If you follow me on Facebook, you know who's coming pretty soon, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> we'll just uh, kind of go from there. But anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>